Okay, got the recording going, and I'm going back to double check to make sure we have everything in the right order. And let me turn off the edit mode so my screen doesn't look crazy. And we are ready. So, we are going to, oh, someone's not going to be here. Okay. We are ready to dive into the deep end of the pool with the real uh, part of this course, which is interesting because, as so many observers have pointed out, uh, UBD nods, whoops, excuse me, I hit the microphone. UBD nods at, at technology, but doesn't really address it directly. I think that is because the two gentlemen who came up with the concept of understanding by design were really focused on trying to change curricular habits. Um, and they just assumed, because I know Grant Wiggins was a nerd, um, they just assumed that technology was going to be an easy part. So let me back up a little bit and let me help you understand what all this is about. We're going to do this in two pieces. We're going to do today. And we're going to do next week. The reason for that is um, there's a lot. There's a lot here for us to unpack. And I want to make sure that you get it. And secondly, next week, I'm going to try to tie the two TPAC and UBD together so that we can see um, how they fit. Um, as I told you last time, the Understanding by Design lesson format, and we'll look at that next week as well, it is the final. It's the outline for the final. So in this particular module, you're being asked to, and let me back up so you can see that, you're being asked to uh, take a swing at filling out the UBD lesson plan format. You may feel free to use that format in your final for our class. In other words, as one of the lessons for the class, you are more than welcome to use that. And here we go. I finally found it. So this is the format that we we, we use for this class. Now, um, you may have heard of UBD in other places. Um, the Danielson framework steals from understanding by design shamelessly. Um, it's embedded in a lot of the curriculum that you see in Odom County, um, and it was embedded in the PGIS system, the Danielson system, as I said. This is a very simplified version of that. And first of all, I want to uh, allay any fears you might have about, oh, my God, how much of this do I have to fill out? And blah, blah, blah. We're going to go over all that tonight. But when you do this for this unit, I mean, for this uh, module, please feel free to then take it and put it in to your final. Boy, we got a lot of stuff to cover here. So let me quit scrolling through things. Let's get to it. What I would like to do um, is just jump right in here to the understanding articles, books, and videos. Now, things are kind of... Um, packed in here. So I want to show you where things live. <clears throat> Your article, and there's only one you have to read for this module, is right there. Okay. Uh, this is the article you're going to be reading, and then you're going to be responding to using something called Goanimate. Now, if you've used Goanimate before with me, you know my take on it. It's more fun than a box of puppies. Um, and I'll go over it quickly tonight. Because I think everybody has had it in the past, sometime or another. Um, and I just want to make sure that um, you understand how to work it. Uh, this is Grant Wiggins. Let me scroll by him a little bit here. And this is Jay McTeague. They came up with Understanding by Design. Oh, golly gee whiz. It's been a long time ago. Um, and it has 
proven to be one of those durable curricular models that it just has, to, it just makes sense. Um, one of the things I love about it is, is in its simplicity, it has a way of being able to uh, encapsulate just about everything we do as teachers. It has two mantras that I just think are just so beautifully simple. Mantra number one is you can't start the journey unless you know where you're going. And that is something that we as teachers do all the time. And a lot of times it's not done intentionally. You know, it's kind of like when you've got a curricular model breathing down your neck, a curricular map, whatever, when you've got MPAs, FPAs, LPAs, all those other SSPAs, SPAs, all those tests that you have to give, you really don't have a sense of journey. You have more of a sense of, oh my God, I got to get this done. Here's the other mantra they have. That is a global one, but I believe it with all my heart. And that is, education is all about learning. Learning is all about understanding that is applied. Now, I don't think, you know, we would have too much argument with that. But I would argue with you that unfortunately what we're seeing more and more is, is just the first part of that. Education is all about learning through understanding. And we stop. And we use uh, test as that final piece. The guys would argue that it has to be by understanding. I'm going to try to play a little bit um, the great hits, I think, of some of these videos. I really, really, I, I have really weaned the number of videos down because uh, there are a lot of them out there about these two guys. Um, so I'm going to just play through them, scrub through them to hit the high points. Let's see if we can hear Grant here. UBD is not a philosophy of teaching. It's not an approach to teaching, it's a planning framework. And it's really important to keep this in mind that what you're trying to do is make it more likely by design that when you teach, you're more goal focused, more effective. You could be a bad teacher with a good plan. In other words, we're not saying that a good plan makes you a better teacher necessarily. You have to learn pedagogical moves, you have to learn to be facile and skilled with how to pay attention to group dynamics. UBD doesn't help you with that, but it does prepare you to think short-term, long-term, what are we trying to accomplish? And it's like the famous line from Pasteur, chance favors the prepared mind. You're totally prepared for teachable moments, not in the sense of, oh, well, that's a cool student comment. Let's just run with that for five days. That's not serendipity. That's letting the, teach, the students write the curriculum. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being so prepared about where you want to end up that you hear a potential student comment as a fantastic entry point to go where you want to end up. In other words, it's your job to know where we want to end up. I don't think we make any apologies about that. But part of where we want to end up is building autonomous, proactive, thoughtful people. It's not just... This is probably the, the point that people have argued f about, about UBD forever. And I, to me, I think it's very clear. By the way, Rachel, since you're in the room with me, could you hear him talking when I was playing that video? Oh, and Madeline's here too. Can you guys hear him talking? Okay. Is it, is it, in other words, if, can you hear him well? How about that? Okay. All right. Good. So this is, this is the thing. 
it's a framework. It is not a theoretical framework like we talked about in TPAC and Tim. No, 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 no. This is basically a fill in the blanks, folks. Just fill in the blanks. Because it's that, this is why I love talking about UBD, especially when we talk about curricular uh, technology integration into the curriculum. Because basically what these guys are saying is, look, it's a big, wide open area. What we want you to be focused on is where are we going? You know, where is this journey going to end up? What they also stress, and I'm going to jump down to another part of the video. Please watch this one all the way through. He's really good. Years and years and years and years and years ago, I had the great, great honor of sitting in a um, very much what you're watching here in this video. I, I got to actually be in a, a training session with uh, Grant and uh, NJ, both of them. Um, his hair was not white. <laughs> you get the idea. But the thing that I came away with from that was that, A, they were very much a couple of nerds who were very interested in doing right by curriculum for kids. And when you get into their five facets of understanding, the way that they see a classroom working is much different because a lot of people take this, you know, the, you need to know where you're going before you begin the journey. You know, they'll say, well, that means we're gonna take a test in two weeks. Yeah, that's where the journey goes. When you get the facets of understanding, then what the guys are trying to get you to realize there is understanding that is not applied is not true learning. It's regurgitation. You know, it's like, okay, so I'm going to spit back at you uh, the things that we went over in unit four. And they'll argue, and I think rightly so. Now, let me go ahead and jump down here to the second one, since we can hear him well. And I'm going to go ahead. And, this is just a continuation of the first one. I've watched this so many times, I know where I want him to talk to you. The textbook is not the course. Repeat after me. The textbook is not the course. The textbook is a resource in support of your goals. The textbook doesn't know your transfer goals, and it frankly doesn't care about them. I worked for Pearson. I've worked on 11 textbooks now, and it's endlessly interesting and endlessly frustrating because of what a textbook, well, what a textbook used to be until the Apple announcement. That's way cool. Way cool. Great possibilities. Go watch the webinar if you haven't seen it. It's really cool. To say it a slightly different way, this is a conversation that every department should always have. Again, this follows from the logic of backward design. If these are our goals, what should we do with the resources? You want to know how bad it is? At a good school, math department, I, I had a woman who freaked out over this exercise. She said, well, all the chapters are important. I mean, she couldn't, she couldn't get beyond that, that we have to go through all the chapters, and all the chapters are important. I said, well, you do know, of course, this was in Michigan. I said, you do know, of course, that the textbook is written to be sold in three states. I mean, you know this, Florida, Texas, California. It's so bad. I was reviewing, as part of my contract with Pearson, I was reviewing a, a social studies book. I wish I remember the term. I should have written it down. Some term I never heard. I didn't know what the hell it was. I said, what is this? Taxes. <laughs> so here's a simple example to underscore the TMA logic. And this is in the, the design guide that you had excerpts from. But it's useful to, to sort of realize that this is the kind of conversation that has to take place. So. Uh, Chuck, what's your goal as a history teacher, U.S. history teacher? Well, I want students to understand the Constitution and three branches of government. That's not a goal. That's the content with a pronoun in front of it. <laughs> what we've been saying all morning is what do you want them to be able to do with it? What meanings and transfer do you want? 
Um, that was one of the most profound aha moments I had as a as a uh, teacher. I was probably in my tenth or fifteenth year when he when I sat through this presentation and he did that. It was just one of those moments where you just kind of sat there and went, "Oh my God, are we really doing anything that?" has application our kids really learning something that then they do a demonstration of understanding that is applied um, and that is what these guys have talked about for a long long time unfortunately grant isn't with us anymore uh, sorry about that he's not with us anymore um, which is, a, I think, a huge loss to uh, the world of curriculum development. He also tells a wonderful story about when he was a soccer coach. And he was uh, watching his kids out on the field playing, and he called for everything to stop. He brought them all over. And he said to them, he said, so what are we doing out here? And they were having a difficult time understanding what they were doing out there on the field. So what he's trying to get us to start seeing is if we design things so that kids from the get-go understand what it is that I have to do and what it is I have to know, we then help them see the prior understandings, how they fit into these new understandings, and then we can see application take the ideas and apply them now let me jump back and i probably should have done a better job of putting this <laughs> because i'm going to get you all sick from jumping around on the screen here but let me let me jump back into here into the lesson plan format because that's where we're going with our journey hour. So let's look at the essential pieces here. So establish goals. Where are we going? Where are we going? And be careful about what, like what he showed you just now. Don't take things from the textbook and add a pronoun to them. Okay? Don't do that. Now, where it says here, and I can't stress this enough, you'll see this in all these boxes, except for essential questions. It says there, parentheses, uh, technology may be embedded here. May, may, may. You don't have to put technology into every one of these boxes. That's the point. Okay? Using uh, a tool, students will demonstrate their understanding of And the tool might be a technology piece, or it may not. Here's the crux of the matter right there. And you've heard this ad nauseum. Essential questions. What are we trying to do here? And then over here, students will understand that. Gives you a nice little prompt there. The students will know, and students will be able to. Boom. That's it. This is really in the wrong place, in my humble opinion. It ought to be here, and this ought to be there. Because to me, you start with the essential question, and then you can go to, this is what kids will understand, this is what kids will know, and this is what kids will be able to do. Down here, here are your performance tasks. And these are all about the... Um, the understanding piece that is applied. And then here's the learning activities where basically you can just say, we will be using this, this, and this, and this. Let me give you an example. So if you go back up here and you look at what Steve's come up with, what he wants you to do is he wants you to look at yourself through the lens of a teacher role. 
So from what teacher role, from the putting understanding first, the article, I'll show you that in a sec, acquisition, meaning making, and transfer, do you feel most comfortable, least comfortable, and why? So my goal here is for you to do a self-assessment after having read this article that these two guys have written called Putting Understanding First. Then I'm going to ask you to demonstrate that by using our old friend, the GoAnimate. So there's where my technology piece fits in. I'm not asking you to write a 25 page paper. Could, but as you'll see in just a second here, to me, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to honor the Wiggins and McTeague's ideas around students finding meaning in what they do and then being able to develop a way of demonstrating and applying that meaning. And don't worry about the second piece down here. It says to demonstrate our understanding, let's apply our understanding by making. We're going to do that next week. And I guarantee you that when we get done with the, and this thing's actually fun. When we get done with this, um, where we're going to be using storyboard that, you won't have any trouble doing what I'm asking you to do. All right, I'm going to jump back in here. And I'm going to jump back in here. So we've heard from Grant. Let's hear a little bit from Jay. Love the music. Hi, I'm Jay McTie. I'm an education author and consultant. And my main work is around understanding by design. Uh, which is a framework for curriculum planning, for assessment design, and ultimately for teaching, with the goal of teaching for understanding and transfer. The key ideas in understanding by design are, are contained in its title, and there are two. Uh, number one, we propose that we teach and assess for understanding and transfer. And some people would say, well, of course, doesn't every teacher want their students to understand what they teach? Well, perhaps, but the devil's in the details. To say we're committed to teaching for understanding raises an immediate question. What's worth understanding in all of the content that we could teach? And this is a challenge for teachers because every subject area has so much content. And there are also some things we value in school that transcend subject or discipline areas, like critical thinking, creativity, the ability to work with others. So the challenge of so much that we could teach is addressed in part by saying, but what's most worth understanding? And we propose in a straightforward way that what we want students to understand are the larger transferable concepts and processes within and across subjects. If we're clear about those big ideas that we want students to understand, it gives us a way of prioritizing our teaching and focusing our curriculum. It also implies that we're going to assess for understanding, meaning just because a student knows things doesn't mean they understand it. So it suggests that our assessments include not just tests of facts or basic skills, but assessments that have students to show their understanding through transfer. Can you use what you've learned in a new situation? Can you explain it in your own words? Can you teach it to someone else? Okay, I'm going to stop him there Jay because, uh, first of all, I want to make clear, when I use the word apply, he uses the word transfer. They're synonymous, okay? So what he's saying to us here, I think we've got it. Now, this little video down here, um, this lady basically kind of goes on a little bit of a rant about how that Jay and Grant never really get into how technology fits in all of this. I just showed you the, the format, the lesson plan format. It fits everywhere. <laughs> that's, I think that's part of the problem that people have with it. But let's get to the point. <laughs> 
here it is right here facets of understanding the whole idea the whole idea here is how do we let's break it down into some nice boxes box number one says you need to know where you're going before you start the journey you need to understand what your goals are the textbook is not the curriculum the textbook is a resource you can tear it apart and decide the order in which you want to address it based upon what you see as your journey's goals what they try to get us to do is to do that kind of backward planning and then take a look at this as you just heard Jay talk about let me pull it up here I think this one is nice and big actually it's not as big as I wanted it to be but I'll go with it what this is is the six facets of understanding so when they talk about transfer I talk about application the dogs are barking just ignore when I talk about transfer or he talks about transfer and I talk it's the same thing here's what we're talking about these six facets of understanding these are not hierarchical one is not better than another these are just different ways of looking at kids taking what they've learned and applying it transferring it these can be done just like TPAC talks about within context so by the way no one's throwing out tests here no one's throwing out quizzes here okay let's make that clear we're not doing that you know, there's nothing better than a good formative assessment. There is nothing better than a good formative assessment. You know that, and I know that. Especially a good formative assessment that's well-timed. Because you get that instant, well, did we get that one? Or not? So we're not throwing that out here. What they are doing is they are asking us to think about looking at the summative assessment in a different way let's look at those so number one ec explanation sophisticated and app explanations and theories that provide knowledgeable and justified accounts of events actions and idea why is that so what explains such events what accounts for such actions how can we prove it to what is this connected how does this work this is that classic example um, you see this a lot in uh, math when you ask kids to help us understand what it is that you just did in other words how does it fit into the bigger pictures bigger picture of what we've already have learned about mathematics explanations can be that it can be science um, and then of course you can use explanation tons of, of this in social studies it's it almost um, it's made for social studies interpretation narratives translations metaphors images and artistry that provide meaning what does it mean why does it matter what of it what does it illustrate or illuminate in human experience again what makes the sense so this one is is maybe a little more toward the social studies or the social sciences um, but still, I, I, I think that there is a place for all of these in every one of the content areas. And that's part of the fun of our job because you're not trying to, let me make sure you understand, you're not trying to cram all six facets of understanding into your lesson, okay? You, 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 you could, but it would be a disaster. This is another one of those uh, signposts on that journey to understanding. This is where the kids are going to stop off and you're going to ask them to create something the first part of what we're doing for this class i think falls directly into that interpretation piece um we'll look at it we go to look at what the assignment is then application ability to use knowledge effectively in new situations in diverse contexts. this is probably what we hope that kids can do 
Um, given this new knowledge that you have, how would you apply it over here to this other thing? Perspective. Critical and insightful points of view, from whose point of view, from which vantage point. I saw this done, the, I saw these, these next two, perspective and empathy, done last year by a wonderful teacher out at Greenwood Elementary, where she basically had her kids, we had this, where she had her kids, um, they did a, uh, I think it was fifth grade, Native Americans, and she basically had them doing a, the classic uh, pick a tribe of Native Americans and help us understand their various aspects. Empathy. Then she went on to have them actually create and research a, what is it like to live in a, Native American situation today and what she would be aware of, what are the issues, what are the problems. That was a real eye opener for kids. A real eye opener. I was sitting working with a group of kids and one of them said, because they were, they were talking about the living conditions and um, of most uh, reservation life in the United States. And this one kid said, I had to live in a trailer at one time in my life. And she did this beautiful explanation why it was so bad to live there. And all the things that she now, living in a house, um, enjoys. And then she went on to say, I understand how people can be so sad if they live on a reservation in something that looks like a double wide. That's really, it was a real, in the group that she was working in, because they all were doing this in groups, there was a lot of questions that were asked. Last one is uh, self knowledge. So, wisdom to know one's ignorance and how one's pattern. This one is right up there in the top thing of, of my teaching. If we could just teach kids to do this, wouldn't that make your job so much easier? It's called epistemology, or epistemological agency. And if we could just get kids to be able to identify, here's what I know. Um, and this is how I, this is, how, how do I shape my ideas about what I know? And what are the limits of my understanding? What do I need to know? What are my blind spots? What am I prone to misunderstand because of, Either misunderstandings, they use the word prejudice, I would use the word misunderstandings, habit or style. How do I learn best? What strategies work for me? That's their six facets of understanding. I think that when we are designing, if we can design so that one of these is in our work, in other words, what are we, how are we going to approach what we're trying to do here? Then we have a really nice, complete framework for how our unit will work. And as we've learned from TPAC, our good old friends, the technology pieces, can then come in. Not before all this other stuff gets done. Let me show you this uh, article just so you can see where it is. Right here. It's very short. Um, and it's written by them. And what they try to do in this article is they try to talk about the different ways of teaching and how we kind of see ourselves fitting into those different ways of teaching. They are very much uh, champions of the idea that we need to use teaching as a way for getting kids engaged and then getting them to transfer their understandings. I'm kind of zipping through this and I don't mean to. I just want you to see 
that it's not that long. Okay. And then right here, these are the different teaching uh, ideas and, and methods. And as you can see here, they have broken it all down into very nice, very nice ways of looking at it. So you have three different kinds of teaching. And so what they're asking you to do as you read this is to think about yourself. Are you a direct instruction kind of teacher? Are you a facilitating teacher? And are you a coaching teacher? And, you know, this is not anything new. This is Adler. So I'm asking you, first of all, to think about what kind of teacher do you see yourself as? So that's what this article is about. The other piece, so let's look at it real fast, is we are asking you to use the tool, go in and to animate and illuminate how you see yourself as a teacher. So I'm going to jump into there and show you where the links and how it all works. And I'm going to stop there because I think what we're doing here is I'm trying to spoon feed this to you. And I want you to take the time to really think about what all this is. So let me go ahead and jump into this real fast. So this is going to make for schools. Click on it again. It takes you there straight there. Um, as you can see, we've got our own little University of Louisville thingy up here. Uh, don't let it scare you. You're just going to come up here and you're going to make a video. Now, making your video can be in one of these three ways. I'm going to urge you to please go to this first one over here. Don't worry about that. It says business friendly, make video. You're going to click on make the video. If you get this message, just enable flash and allow your browser to use it. Get that message a lot, by the way. Um, I'm using Chrome. Um, we, we get that message in Firefox. Um, if you're using Internet Explorer, it might be more, <laughs> um, what's the word I should use? It, it, might, it might not be as clear. It might be clouded up with things like, are you sure you want to use this you know, insecure secure content? You say yes. Move on. So here we are. So the first step you have to do is you want to come down here and you want to decide which template you'd like to use. So here's education. You don't have to use these, by the way. You could jump up and use any of the templates you want. But I'm going to kind of do a sort of very simple one so you kind of get a sense of what we're doing. Here we are. This is your sort of classic classroom. Um, if you want to work, you want to show one that has uh, high school kids. Well, this doesn't look really like that much like high school because we don't put High school kids and it's kind of like college really but here's the thing and this is why i love um go animate first of all um if we use this as our background um we all don't look like her okay so the first thing you can do is you can go here to where it says character and you can make a custom character. Hang on, everybody. I'm going to go let the dogs out. Okay. Come on. Come on down here. Come on. Well, that never happens inside the University of Louisville, does it? 
So I'm going to go here to, um, I can create a custom character. And so when I create a custom character, I can make one that looks just like me. And so before you do anything, you can start and make your own character. Now just come up here to where the big plus is, pick your body, and go to work. So if you're a casual kind of guy, there you go. Uh, just work your way through the choices here. Interesting choices of uh, pants. Interesting choices. Well, this is for your color and your feet. What kind of shoes are you going to wear? And now we kind of get into what the head can look like. So if you've got a beard or if you've got a smaller beard and depending on what your head looks like, you get the idea. When you're finished, make sure you click on the little picture of the floppy disk over here. And that way now you've been added in to the characters. And I can jump back, I can make my video. And when I go and pick that uh, setting, it does run a little slow sometimes. I can go in and I can find that background that I wanted to use. And I can just click and delete and then go to my characters and I can go and find the character that I just made and here he is and drag him in and now the character that I created is front and center. Now what can you do with with all of this? Oh my goodness what can't you do? So at this point, I can have the character talk by clicking on the dialogue. But look what's cool. See these little kids over here? I can actually click on them, and I can have them do dialogue. So that's why, you know, even if you don't want to use these little kids, you could basically wipe all this out and bring in desk, etc. cetera. Um, let me show you how you do that. So if you don't want to have little kids sitting around the table looking very all kindergarten-y or something, and you want to go, um, excuse me, I teach high school, come over here, find your props. You can do a search. I'm going to say desk. Now I have different kinds of looks that I can bring over to... Um, my little movie that I'm making. I can drag these in, which looks a little more like a high school. I can click and I can copy them and I can paste them so that I can just have more of them in my... And the other thing, of course, I can do is if I teach high school kids, I can go ahead and I can either make them look bigger, taller, or I can just eliminate, eliminate them altogether and go back in to my character look and find... Um, a character that looks more like a high school kid. And you'd be surprised if you go here to custom characters, <laughs> you'll find uh, lots of high school kids because lots of high school kids have used this uh, product. And you can bring them in and you click on them 
and you can move them behind or in front of things, depending upon where you want them to be. You can flip them. Uh, you can have them, you, well, you don't really want him to do any action right now. So we can move him and we can bring the desk to in front of him. Come on, Mr. Desk. All right, let's bring him back. There we go. So I bring the desk forward and I send the kid back. And now I can him as a part of my little movie I'm going to make. You're basically going to, you're just going to do one scene, by the way. Um, and all you're going to do is you're going to give us a sense of how do you see your role as a teacher based upon what you read in that article. I'm going to go ahead and leave all that. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to have fun with it. I don't want it to be something onerous. Okay. I just want you to take the time to think about if you had to describe yourself after having read this article, how would you describe yourself in the teacher role that you think that best represents your teacher? Does it have any kind of ranking? Does it have any kind of this is a better teacher, that's a better teacher? No. What I want, want you to do is I want you to think about how your teaching is going to fit into when we get ready to start designing this understanding by design um, lesson plan and unit study that we're going to do. We'll also next week, the next week is going to be the real deep dive. We are going to dive into, and you might want to take a look at this, we're going to be using a tool called Storyboard That. And we're going to use the storyboard that because um, it will literally walk you through the process of creating your first lesson plan. What you need to be thinking about as we work our way through all this is what are the big goals that you would focus your unit around? Now, let me emphasize the big goal no S, singular, okay? I'm not trying to kill you here. I just want you to pick something from your content that you're very comfortable with and you enjoy. Because when we get to the part where we can really start talking about how it looks with um, technology, my goodness, um, I'll show you when we get to that point, uh, the new Google Classroom stuff that is just startling what we can now do with that. And if you are a Google Classroom school, I hope you will take this to heart. And as you're developing this thing, you'll be thinking about how it would look into your Google Classroom plan. Because this was really, really, you know, looking back on it now, that's 20 some odd years ago, um, this was speaking very eloquently to the Google Classroom because of what the guys back then were seeing is how we need to plan for where we're headed and then we need to go back and we need to put into place those pieces that take us to that heading. Now that's a little short tonight and I apologize for it being short. Um, I just think that the first parts that we need to understand are the fact that this is not a theoretical framework. Um, this is strictly a step one, step two, step three, step four. And how does technology fit within this? It fits just about anywhere where you want to put it. The facets of understanding, the facets of understanding, if you will, I'm going to play it just for a little bit. Let me play this for you for a little bit. Um, because I think people get... A little mixed this up. This presentation here. provides a brief overview of the six facets of understanding utilized in the understanding by design model. 
Six Faucets of Understanding are adapted from Wiggins and McTeague's Understanding by Design text. Students demonstrate understanding in a variety of ways. Explanation and interpretation is exhibited as students share ideas with each other or with a specified audience using selected words, images, sounds, smells, whatever conveys the message. Demonstrating application, students recognize that the same concept can be and often is illustrated in a variety of settings or subject matter. Okay, I want to stop her right there because uh, she's kind of quiet. It might be hard for you to hear her. Watch that video because that will really help you get your head around what facets of understanding are about. Again, they're not hierarchical. There's no one way of doing this. Um, as she does here in this little video, she kind of lumps things together, explanation, interpretation. It's fine. But if you can get your head around this idea of how kids can demonstrate the understanding. So that's what fast understanding are all about. How do kids demonstrate, transfer, apply? All those are synonymous terms. How can they do that? And how does technology fit into that? And that, my friends, is UBD in a nutshell. Next week, we will, as I said, dive deep into using this website, Storyboard That, and we will walk through it together. Uh, I hope those of you who will be with me in synchronous uh, mode, uh, I hope you will join me by diving out of the, um, you know, watching me, but actually go over and actually do the Storyboard That as I demonstrate it so that we can have a conversation around what it is that um, how you see it fitting into your thinking as we design this lesson plan. And then um, let's go through and actually do a lesson plan together. Uh, and we can do that. And I'll be taking you into where it's located in the live text. And let's do that together as well um, and have sort of a well. So let's let's use this as our journey's end. This is what we want to do. And then let's walk through the steps to see how we can get to that journey soon. So as always, I look forward to seeing you, hearing from you. If you have any questions, um, this, I'm not going to, I didn't spend a lot of time here because these are such good, good videos. If you watch all of these, you don't need to sit and listen to Steve. You hearing it from the horse's mouth. So they, they are the guys that came up with this. And unlike most of these kinds of videos, these are spot on perfect. But if you do have a question, um, if the GoAnimate, if I did that too fast and you need some more help with understanding it, um, if you, I think I made it clear, all you're doing is one scene, putting yourself into it and helping us understand through your words, through the dialogue that you put in. Um, and if you don't remember how to do that, throw out a request to me at 502-457-2937. That's my SMS text. Uh, I think that uh, once you get her into it, you click on the person, you hit the dialogue, you tell what you want to do, speech to uh, text to speech, and you type in what you want them to say. You'll be fine. But otherwise, I will see you next Wednesday at this same time. We will be, um, as I said, finishing up understanding by design, and we will then actually go in and create that first lesson. I'm going to let Madeline and Rachel have the last words. Do you all have anything that you want to ask me before we finish up a little early? All right. Rachel's good. Madeline, you're kind of new. I don't. Have you ever had a class with me where we use GoAnimate before? I don't think so. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'll see everybody next Wednesday. 
Y'all have a rest of a good week.